Do you think there's something, I don't want to say wrong about it, but do you think there's something that's not good for the growth of kids between the age of 14 to 20 that they're locked away? Because it's a solitary thing, gaming, and it's not a social thing in the sense that you're not interacting directly with others. Or is it really more of just, it's another symptom of the whole Internet, social media, everyone is really, everything's becoming less interactive. Yeah. Is this another example of that? Do you think it's, or, it's, or is it worse in some way? Or just yeah, another no, example? I think it's a, it's a really valid question and, and it's something that I think about because, you know, I grew up traditional sports. I didn't right, grow you, actually, I, you played professional I, sports, right? I, I didn't grow up as a gamer, but it's a really good question you ask. And I think, again, I kind of go back to my time at FaZe Clan because I think FaZe Clan's been kind of one of the brands that have done this really well. And that is... Um, promoting a, a, a healthy lifestyle where you have kids from all walks of life that are you know, pro athletes, they're casual athletes, they are models, musicians, they have all sorts of skills and it's not that you're locked in a basement playing video games 12 hours a day. And I think the reason that they became so, so, so kind of cool from a brand standpoint is they had these four kids that they, they made great content, but they came out and they were the first kids to say, you know what, we're gamers and gaming's cool. Right. And a lot of kids who game sat there and went, oh, I'm, it's actually okay that I'm a gamer. I, I, I'm allowed to be. And it's like Tony Hawk was cool as a skateboarder out there interacting. And that seemed like this where the parents hated it or, didn't, or loved it. It's fresh air. It's fun. You mentioned things to me before off, off this camera before we started that it's important that like these kids have dietitians, they have like masseuses and they have like, yeah. like they, have, they have this whole regimen of eating, working out and maintaining focus, right? For sure. So that's definitely at the esports level, your pro gamers that are, you know, so I'll kind of go back a step just to, to make it clear is within esports, you, you know, you have guys that are pro gamers and they're signed to teams. Within that, they'll they'll be getting paid a fixed salary. They'll get a percentage of prize money. That that's your, your pro gaming esports part. Then you have more of your sort of casual gamer content creators, and this is the part of the the industry that's really growing more and more with you know the growth of Twitch and, and other platforms. And within the content creation sort of standpoint, the, there's sort of two parts to this. So yes, absolutely, in terms of keeping focus and keeping healthy and fit for these guys that are pro gamers is super important. For the casual gamers that are monetizing, you know, themselves through content creation, it's funny you, you, your point before around, you know, being social because I actually think the emergence of this industry is because kids are socializing through the internet more and more these days anyway. Gaming has evolved so much that it's not just about how good you are at gaming, it's about your personality and what you have to offer. And kids are actually socializing and communicating all over the world. You know, it's actually pretty crazy. It's not to say, you know, sit in your, your basement all day and just talk to kids playing video games all over the world, but it has become much more social. And I think it, I think there should be a balance for sure, but, but I think kids are going to play video games anyway. I think if you can do that in a, in a healthy way and, 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 you know, be able to teach some skills around that. And I think the, the industry is evolving in a way that, that that's happening. Are there things that are purposely built into these games to make the kids want to continue to play them. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think it's the same with with anything, right? Where whether it's music or movies or anything, you know, that you know, we talk about pop culture. And again, I think gaming is the new form of entertainment. No, I, I'm not talking about from a perspective, uh, the games designed on purpose to create addiction to play them more. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't talk too greatly to, to the publishers and, and, and how they're creating video games. I'd say there's there's probably something in there, right? Because kids don't want to put their controller down. But I think that also probably comes back to a competitive nature as well, right? When you get good at something and you're competing against others, you, you, you kind of keep going to get better. And you don't want to stop gaming is obviously one that you have the ability to do so for longer because of the, sure. you know, your lack of physical exertion or, or whatever else. I think maybe I didn't say that exactly how I wanted to. Like, I, addiction is not necessarily unhealthy or it's going to hurt you. What I'm saying is, is there are certain qualities that we do when we try to gamify things. In my industry, we say, let's gamify it. That yeah. means do things to make people want to keep playing and engage. And the word addiction, I guess, means, you know, 
are there are people sitting in a room design these games and they're like is like sort of a playbook that okay we know that we have to have x number of jewels they chase or lives they get and we're going to monetize it it's it's probably at that level isn't it for sure absolutely and do you think that there is something wrong with that or no no i don't like i mean in general i think that's going to come across in, in all walks and forms of life. So I, I don't, but again, kind of going back to your question before, I think that comes down to the, the focus within the industry for us, you know, to, to build a brand within the industry, we want to do that in a way that's healthy. It's not promoting kids playing games nonstop for 20 hours, right? It's about a balance and it's about promoting other aspects and walks of life rather than. But do you think it's better? I think it's better. Like, I, I mean, the more I think about it, I'd rather my kids be engaged in watching gamers and the positivity of competition than the hate and the nonsense and all the, you know, the worry about likes and, and, the, and, the, and the terrible shit that goes on in regular social media. Like, I think then, in some level, gaming might be a healthier place for these kids to be. Because, sure. like, the, the, like, Facebook and, and, and Instagram, like, you know, it's really, hate, the haters are just like, unbelievably toxic to these kids and they make kids depressed and i'm wondering if gaming is almost maybe a, a more positive social outlet for them because at least there's competition involved and that i think usually brings out the best in people not the worst yeah. what are your thoughts yeah for sure i think there's i think there's definitely valid points to that I'd, I'd say if you spend enough time on twitch you'll probably see that there's a bit of that within the gaming world as well I will say that I think across you know a multitude of platforms and orgs in the space, there's a lot of work being done around anti-bullying, um, you know, around hate speech or you know um, any any type of, of speech or, or bullying or right. putting putting down. And I think that's something that we're seeing more and more in the industry, which I think is great. You know, being able to control you know what kids say sure. and do on the internet is a pretty tough. No, I I know. I mean, like I always say, like I don't know. If how easy it would be for me to be a kid again like in today's world right we grew up for it was sure. different first of all you know most of the bullies now are cowards because they're able to bully on the internet so they're real cowards Keep, i mean all, I, think all, I think all bullies are mostly cowards at heart but still but really like the ability to bully behind the phony screen name and not know and make others feel terrible um is obviously a bad thing and i i would just think that in i'm sure it exists in gaming my guess would be though typically like in it, most things virtually mimic the real world. And like the best thing for kids is I'd rather have my kids playing a sport or competing for sure. than just sitting around like pot shots at each other, right? So I think 100%. Yeah, it's probably a healthier outlet for most kids. Definitely. No, no, I agree. I mean, it, it, and again, going back to your question before, I think it's a, it's a, it's a real question. It's an interesting one because I think it's something that a lot of parents kind of struggle with in terms of, I actually met a, a journalist in New York at the Fortnite World Cup and she was sitting behind the face clan guys and she was asking me like, what's all this fuss about? Like, I don't really get this space. I've brought my son here and, and I, I actually like, you know, debated with myself whether, whether I bring him to the Fortnite World Cup or not because I don't love how much time he spends playing video games. Mm. But what she said was when he puts on his headset, he grows confidence. He's a little mm. kid and he goes in the gym at school and he gets picked on. It is healthier than than is perceived. And, and I think a lot of the orgs are very cognizant of that and, and promoting gaming in a healthy sure. way and capacity. And it's a bit of a level playing field for, for girls and guys. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. matter how old you are or your ethnicity.